Hello everyone, welcome to the Desolation Sounds podcast. My name is Stephen Hook and this is a podcast celebrating everything to do within the world of alternative music, be that rock, punk, metal or even extreme metal. Still have a squeaky ass chair. Coming up on this week's show, fuck all in terms of news, there's a... Uh, spoilers, Corey Taylor blew his testicle up, but there's also an update from Pigeon and Conjurer and their collaborative album Curses Metal Hands. Otherwise though, we still got album reviews in abundance. We've got album reviews from Bat a speed metal supergroup featuring members of Municipal Waste, Cannibal Corpse, and Vulture. Fracture, an emo punk group from Germany. Potence, a screamer band from France. And Open Mic this week is the debut album, one of my favourite albums of all time, from Scars on Broadway. It's fucking Eurovision. Accidental Eurovision up in here. Um, but like I said, first of all, the news. There's, It's so thin on the ground for news. The, uh, well, Corey Taylor blew his testicle up, or ruptured a testicle, or something along those lines. Apparently, he was in the studio doing, like, vocal rehearsals, and I believe he was singing Dokken. And, yeah, no man should ever have to go through that, especially not having to listen to Dokken, or sing along to Dokken, but that, that, or a lot of media coverage are covering the fact that Take the Blue is ball off. Uh, we have new music though. New music come from the collaborative album from, like I said, Pigeon and Condra. Lead single from the collaborative album Curse's Metal Hands, which is coming out the 16th of August. The song is called High Spirits. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet because I've been rather busy and I'm so very sorry. Please don't hurt me. Uh, but my guess is I've heard like a 30 second snippet of it from like a Spotify preview. It is swelling huge bombastic sounding post metal so if this if that is your thing do go check it out if you are if you get the holy roll subscription service which i aim to one day and if you're unfamiliar what it is you get a new release album every month you can either have it as digital cd or vinyl uh for like 10 15 or 20 quid a month the pigeon conjure album will be the august release and that, more than anything, has made me really want to subscribe to it, other than the fact that I am literally poverty. But aside from that, it sounds like a fucking banging deal. But yeah, Pigeon Conjure, the album comes out the 16th of August. And you can hear, you can hear, sorry, the debut single, High Spirits, right now. Maybe not right now, listen to me first, but after listening to me, go off and find it. It's loud, it's just bonkers from the 30 second clip I've had. And yeah, it should be good. I have faith in them clunk as it is album reviews for this week then we're going to start with bat bat uh they it's i've i say album reviews there's more eps than anything else this week but ecstasy is the ep's name and it's their second ep from bat they come from richmond virginia and they boast current and former members of municipal waste cannabis corpse and vulture so they're kind of like a mini supergroup, a medium group, if you will. Uh, they're also a bit of a throwback act, so they blend the speed of speed metal with sort of like the dirtiness of punk that sort of sits on the line of like a black and punk territory. Think of like Venom in them early days, that kind of ilk and disfear and that kind of thing. Uh, you even get like a retro feel just from the album artwork. It looks like an old punk sketch or punk patch from... Uh, the 80s and yeah the whole aesthetic of it pretty fucking good and musically it is the sort of thing where it is denim vests and long hair and beards and the rest of the mcgubbins the ep opens with the song wild fever and there's tons of harmonies in the riffs think of like almost like i made any sort of stuff just a bit low um lower end that's in the foreground. In the background, you've got the deep beat style drums that really like, push the song along and this great rolling bass line. Imagine uh, the Out of the Gate frontman. He's got a side project called Disphere, which are a like DB punk band. Imagine Disphere covering Wolf. And that's kind of like the realm you've got and like how it... So the comparison I made in my head, at least. There's a great moment in the like closing moments of the song where the vocalist, Ryan Waste, um, he sort of like changes the vocal, vocal execution of the chorus. So it's it's almost, I've described it as like a goth rock, 
like Billy Idol kind of thing because the whole time he's going like wild fever and then towards the end he like sort of like steps down as he sings I don't know what the proper word for it but it, it's a you know it when you hear it it's like wild fever the sort of note where apparently you can't really make without bobbling your head along like a bobblehead dog um, and I don't know what it is, but it really clings to me every time I hear it. I just think it's a really, it's slightly unexpected for like the rest of the EP and like the style of music. It's not something that I hear massive amounts of, or I can't recall hearing it in great deal, but I thought it was a really cool, uh, little tidbit in there. And it does like, you do sort of turn around and it's like, did it just happen? Why? Yes. Yes, it did. Um, and it largely remains, so that uh d beat drums rolling bass line and like the harmonic riffs it largely stays with that formula throughout the ep it's only short it's like just under 20 minutes i think off my head uh, the song ice is pretty much the only exception to that role it's not a massive exception and um, it's more slowed down it's a bit more of a groovy affair um still hardcore as fuck and the chorus is like a big fist pumping kind of deal where it just gets the energy go well gets your adrenaline going a little bit and you just want to deck a horse which i did on red dead the other day don't recommend it will backfire uh ritual fuel fuel ritual full after ice um resumes the pace and the punk rockness um i've likened it to there's one modern venom record not the one they just released one app before that it's got an orange cover i can never remember the name of it it's got long head punks in it long head punks was a song that i thought of when i heard ritual fool even they go as far as to shout fuck off before it busts in a chorus or busts into a guitar cell like long haired punks does by Venom. Uh, the closing title track is easily my favourite song from the EP. It is the early like first second album days of Iron Maiden style riffs. And it showcases one of the things that I really enjoyed the most about the EP. Uh, throughout the EP... Although you might not be always be paying attention to the lyrics or like the fullest attention to the lyrics, like for me, if I listen to music, my first attention goes to the music side of things. I know for a lot of people, their first attention goes to the lyrics side of things. It's just, you know, personal thing. For me, listening to it and just like having the lyrics as like a second focus, you can, every now and again, you'll hear the wordplay come through. Which is a weird thing, I know, but it's almost like a faux poetry. Like in Ecstasy, the title track, you've got uh, a bloody path, her wasted, sorry, her, a bloody path, her twisted wrath. I've got to write in front of me, I can't fucking read it. Uh, no one can stand in her way when the axe strikes down, you'll hear the sound of steel mutilating her prey. Um, in Ritual Fool, you've got bore me to death with your funeral drool, take off your cloak, you're a ritual fool. And possibly. Perhaps long, uh, long live the lewd is like the worst offender, like best offender, worst offender, an offender. Your soul is screwed. Long live the lewd. We pave your our own way while stalking our prey. Victims on meat. We're taking it back to the street. Like weird semi-conscious poetry, and it like when like I said, when you're not massively pay attention to the lyrics and you're focused on the music first, and those sort of lines just keep popping out of you, like with melody i'm just saying i'm like a boring old shit but when they actually got melody and timing behind it it really pops out at you and i thought it was really really excuse me dying a little bit i thought it was really, really interesting still dying um my thoughts on it as a whole speed metal remains one of the few niches left in metal it's never been one that took like a mainstream appeal it was like it Borderline getting big in the 80s and like late 70s, but then it just ever went down the route of oh, it's going to be thrash metal, it's always going to be power metal. So, whatever it is, out and out speed metal just doesn't really hit that much. And it's quite bizarre because whilst listening to this, it is a lot of fun. And it is the sort of thing where in your head you do have visions of like, um, like I said before. Denim cutoffs, uh, patches, massive headbang, and that kind of thing, and it's fine. But then you do have it. I'm. It's hard to put in. Scale. It's not my sort of thing. I don't know how often I'll come back to it, but it was. It was enjoyable. Long Live the Lude is a great song. Like I said, the title track "Axesy" is 
really, really good. But yeah, it's just, it's just a fine EP, and I hate describing music as just fine. It's just it, it's content. It will do because it doesn't really open up anything. Like it just, I don't listen to much other music like this, so I'll probably let the worst market for it. When going online and looking at whatever other people thought, this is getting really high reviews for people who like thrash metal and like punk music and well like og punk sort of stuff and like have a fondness for that bubble of denim jackets and beards so the market for it is there and it is like the market is really favoring this but for me it was just perfectly acceptable it was fun while it lasted but like i said i don't know how often i'll go back to it if you are a fan of venom i know i kept comparison a lot comparing them a lot but it's for a reason. Uh, if you look look at Venom, look at Motorhead as well. I'd say less modern Motorhead because Mo uh, modern Motorhead was a lot like a slight lower tempo and did sort of go towards um, more he like heavy metal sort of things, like slowed down heavy metal kind of things. When in the early days, when they did have that speed metal punk influence in there, definitely. And I also the way. The vocals hit you above the riffs. I kind of got a power trip feel, which you know power trip is like a slightly darker affair, but I did kind of get the overall feeling of power trips. So yeah, if you go for Venom, if you go for power trip, you go for Motorhead, would very much recommend this. It's called Axtasy, A X E S T A S Y. It is an EP from Bat, and available right now. Next, then, the f first album in our accidental. Eurovision Ensemble. Uh, the band is called Fractor. They come from Weimar in Germany and this is a second EP and they play a kind of melodic emo punk kind of thing. And the EP, because I, I didn't realize it was an EP at the time, uh, the EP is called Bluthen, which I believe means bleeding. And I'm going to try and pronounce a lot of German words next. I doubt I'm going to get any of them right, but please be aware that I am trying. Um, so Blue Them does it traverses a lot through the full punk spectrum. I wrote that down to sound so much better than what I actually said. So track one, and here we go. Ein Drittel Herzl zwei Drittel Benzin. I thought I did quite well on that. I'm proud of me. Uh, so track one, yeah, has more of like a Tony Hawk skater punk kind of vibe. Uh, track two, Zumir. Has a more alkaline trains, alkaline trio feeling to it, um, but that, I mean it's a very upbeat pop punk with more effort emphasis on the punk than the pop. But it's got that ever so slight, like melodic goth tint to it. Like when you say goth rock and punk together, you usually think of like AFI. If you like scale it back a bit, and you sort of like looked more like the punk kind of thing, I reckon. That's more of an alkaline trio kind of thing. That's just me. It might just... I might be on my own, which often I am. But that's the kind of feeling I got from Zoomir. On track three, Das Mädchen mit den Öden Geschichten. Again, I'm pretty sure I nailed that. I'm bilingual. Um, that is the 25-year response or reply Germany been conjuring up for Green Days when I come around. Honestly, like the pacing and like the... You can still call it a riff. It's very much When I Come Around-esque. And there's nothing wrong with it. When I Come Around is a very good song. Maybe. It's. As a whole, this release wears its heart on a sleeve. Um, so you've got all those sort of examples just there. Uh, Nix Übrig, which is track five. Again, pretty sure I've got the, that umlaut on the U. Bang on. That goes into like a full... Menzinger's style power emo and yeah it's for it's fine to wear your heart your heart and sleeve that and like showcase what you're interested in but i think just there's a difference between two words i can't think of i guess honoring and copying or being inspired by and copying might be better um Similar 
oh, what was the Avenged Sevenfold album? Was it Hail to the King that drew the same sort of thing where everyone said, like, that song's a Machine Head song, that song's a Metallica song. It's perfectly fine to have a song that sounds, oh, this they've kind of, like, took that from this or they've kind of took that from that. But when, like, the whole theme of a song is that, just expand, just put, like, a bit more of yourself into it, I think. Because the best songs, or, like, the most interesting songs are ones where they say, it's like this, but you've modernised it and you give it your own take. And now it sounds original while still bringing in, like, a new audience. Like, a new audience will come and say, that sounds really familiar. It's like this. And they listen to more and listen to the rest of your back catalog. Like, it's still, I can see how I got here, but this is really good too. And it's original. If that and any of that rambling makes sense. Um, with, because it's all in German... And despite my phenomenal execution of the German language, I cannot speak the German language. So it's hard to attain context about the EP and lyrically and that kind of thing. Um, when, unless if any of you listen to it and you speak German, it's probably really fucking easy. And I don't want to put it into Google Translate because Google Translate is basically dys dyslexic schizophrenic. You'll be there all day just trying to figure out what context is. So... With special thanks to, and I really hope I get this part right, especially Belle de Bruin at Decibel is an online webzine. I will post a link on Twitter and Facebook later on in the week. Uh, she reviewed Blue Thin by Fractor, and sort of because she is a German, or at least speaks the language, she has given per like perspective on what they are talking about. So many, many thanks to that, or to that article, I should say. Um, so the EP sort of like de um, delves into the depths of the human mind, which, interesting take. I'm um, digging it. I kind of wish now I could listen to how they talk about it. Um, but she assures me that there is, well, she assures the, the reader, the casual reader, because she didn't write it for me. Um, she assures the reader that there is a, still a cynical sense of humour masking it all. So track four, I believe translate as again such a sad song i did not want to write which is a very like dark twisted way of wording that kind of thing which i made the comparisons to menzinger earlier the from the sounds of it he still have like a vo lyrical delivery and like a sense of humor that's very somber and emotive but musically it's still an upbeat ride and it still keeps your energy up and like the flip side of having that very cynical sense of humor is like it's still a sense of humor they're trying to have fun over something that's really really depressing so I think it is a very interesting take on everything. They are, like I said, they're blending a lot of different ideas and influences and bring them together to this very pessimistic delivery, I guess you could say. Um, I'd like them to stick, like I said earlier, I'd like to stick to one kind of idea because, as I was saying, they go through so many different ideas. Um, the when I come around alt rock pop punk thing um the opening of th that opening song is really really good don't get me wrong but because there's so many different styles going on i'd like to stick to see them just stick to one kind of thing and for me it would be like the sort of emo punk sort of thing that they did in track one and they sort of did in track two where it's modern contemporary emo so you're looking at your menzingers and your spanish love songs where it's like upbeat pop punk with just the saddest most upsetting kind of lyrics and if you like as a whole if you like spanish love songs if you like menzingers if you like green day which i know green is pretty pretty broad one but here we are give this a shout uh if you understand the language if you understand the german language i would be really intrigued to hear about you and find out how they write about, like I said, the content of the EP is depths of the human mind. I would love to know how they write about it with context. Like I said, that's something that Google Translate just can't give you. It's not there yet. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a really interesting emo punk kind of thing. There's a lot of ideas in there, but also a lot of room to develop the sound and develop their own identity. And yeah, I think they could do really well one day if they put themselves into it next ep or next album i'll definitely be giving it a listen um the ep is called blue then the band's called fractor they come from weimar in germany 
And yeah, like I said, go for it if you're a fan of Green Day, the Menzingers, Spanish love songs, or just modern emo punk mesh thing. And again, huge shout out to Bella de, Belle de Bruin, uh, Decibel, I believe it's Decibel.de, um, for her very, very good review on Bluthen and sort of like helping me get perspective on what they're going on about. So many, many thanks to them. Like I said, I'll post a link somewhere within the next couple of days. Last album of the week then come from France. Obviously, uh, we're looking at the French band Potence or Potence? Potence? I'm probably going to bounce a lot between the two pronunciations, but P-O-T-E-N-C-E. Uh, the album, because we actually got an actual album, I did not realise Accessy was only an EP. I was aware Blue Them was, was not aware Accessy was. Potence album is called Le Cult des Bureaux. I took French at GCSE. Why is my German better than my French? I believe uh, Le Cult des Le Cult des Bureaux is French for the cult of the mercenaries. I th- Cursing executioners, I think. Cursing executioners. I think that's what I looked. I looked up yesterday and I forgot to write it down because I'm a twit. Uh, this is their second album. They come from. Besançon? Besançon, Strasbourg in France. Go with Strasbourg. I recognise Strasbourg. Um, and like I said, they do a very aggressive, very explosive, very abrasive version of Screamo. Um, and Screamo is quite like a broad term. because Screamo is one of the very few dirty words. Excuse me, I had to die again. Scream is one of the few dirty words left in music. Like, it's... T- God, that T. Every every week. Uh, in 2019, which is the current year, you've got new, me- new metal in the midst of a comeback and no one's really treating it like a dirty word anymore. You've got grunge that's been coming back for years and no one's really seen that as like an old thing anymore. I've seen... Emo's gone on a huge revival recently. It's much more mainstream than it was when I was first getting into music all those years ago. Every time you see, like even now, if someone describes music to me as Screamo, I cringe. And my, I, my entire shoal is harking up. So Screamo is a very mean way of describing music these days. If you want to find an actual Screamo, the fact that they've got a on like bank and whatever, you've got to look for Scrams, S-K-R-A-M-Z, which if you like this uh, but as I talked more about Potence, if you like the sort of thing, look for Scrams. Don't look for Screamer, look for Scrams. Um, the Potence sound, Potence, fucking hell, is... It's got the... Big, like, Touche Amore, melodic, hardcore... I don't even, I don't even know, like, just drawn out notes. Um, at the forefront, you've got... Usually, like, quite clean guitar lines but at the back it is a blistering mess of drums and rhythm section and the vocalist i couldn't identify which band member does what uh the vocalist just sounds like he is like one note away from completely blowing out his throat it is a vicious vicious affair is potence um board lines on the crust side of things uh, very convergy at times, which I get to a little bit more throughout. Um, yeah, very fu- very hard, very fast, very aggressive. And I spoke about before how good emo is, or how good you can define, or how you can define good emo. Words are difficult. Usually, you can identify good emo kind of in the way that lyrically. It would be very dark. It would be very pessimistic. Even if it's like the delivery. You look at a band like One of the Years and they sing cleanly so you can always understand what they're saying. But the first few times you listen to them you're not quite picking up the, the lyrics. Like I how, like I just said, I how I ingest music. Fuck me. You can always tell that Dan Campbell always sounds like he's on the brink of tears. Like first time I heard the chorus to Palm Reader. He's just... It just sounds like a defeated man, doesn't he? But musically, 
it's always still quite dramatic and often still quite upbeat. And every time I say that, I give like very almost zero consideration to the screamo equivalent. And it is like the dark, the broody nature of the lyrics. But it is just an absolute hardcore dissonant mess in the background. And it's actual screamo, scrams screamo, I think it's just so underrated now because you can have some absolute fire hardcore. But because it gets given that screamo label, everyone just sort of goes, Ew. Mm. Ew. Similar to Fractor, um, though you can't understand the lyrics unless you are indeed French or you can speak French. Uh, the vocal delivery, as I was saying before, it just sounds like the desperate screams from a horror movie victim. Um, the that in fact delivery does impose that familiar feeling that you get from emo, that like very dark, very foreboding aura about the music. Uh, the opening song, uh, oh fuck, Chat de Gutier, Gutier, Gutier. Maybe? Yeah, sure, why not? Um, the opening song we'll go with has those long, sh uh, like those longing shouts over a very dirty southern rhythm section, like I was saying before. Really, really good hardcore drum line in the back. And as I was trying to describe before, a weirdly, not so far as clean, but like the upper scale, and compared to everything else, which is very like low end and quite fuzzy and distorted and scary. The lead guitar bit is like on like the higher register, almost like it's quite haunting actually because it's so comparatively clean in amongst this discordant horror show in the background. It's quite unsettling. It's quite it's not off putting to the way where you want to like switch it off. It's just it's creepy, man. It's just creepy. Uh, the in fact the guitars. Go on like a Converge esque. I've described it as isolated scale moments at the end of verses. I don't know how else to describe it. When you listen to Converge, um, usually Jacob Bannon will say his line and the guitarist is. I was going to say Ben. It's not Ben, isn't it? I can't remember his fucking name. That will bug me. That's going to have to be a Google. And um, the guitarist will sort of like do his own. I guess scale afterwards and his own little side riff thing. Kurt Ballou, of course it is Kurt. I'm sorry, Kurt, please don't hate me if you ever hear me. Um, so yeah, Kurt usually does this like little scale thing on the side, which is sort of like climbs down, because you go further down the guitar to make it a high note. Climbs down the guitar, just like a little accent on the end, I guess you could say. I don't play guitar often. I don't know how best to describe it, but when you listen to Converge and you understand, you will recognise what I'm talking about. Listen to Potence and it's all over uh, the record. But with... The opening song, that's where I noticed it the most, at least. Um, the rest of the album rises stays in that mould. Uh, but with it being such a short album, even though uh, Accessy and Blue Then are like sub-20, amazingly, because they're so short, um, La Culta Dare's Burrow sort of sounds like a prog album in comparison, even though it's still only like sub-30 minutes. But with it being such a short album, that music style like, that's quite rinse and repeat, it doesn't get boring. It's still quite intense the entire way you go through. Uh, the closing song, La Te Please, I, I don't really think I got that one right. Nah, I don't think I got that one right at all. The closing song is maybe the most out there song. Uh, it goes all in the dramatics. You've got very lonely sounding clean vocals. And that comes after like a very slow, groovy start. And inevitably it finishes with, within the mood set by the rest of the album, just this big, bombastic, chaotic frenzy of music. Uh, overall, it's a very converged, very crust-punk-inspired screamo. It's... What's the term I'm trying to think of? It's got a lot of... Um, I don't want to say background ambience, but it's not the right word. And I can't think of what it, I've used it before, but just like in the background, there's always like something playing, and it is the like the echoing note or the just overriding. I dare I say like post rock kind of cover over everything, 
in amongst all those like very intense sounding screams um it's it's just a very abrasive it's very angry and it's got those moments of melody within there it would not sit too out of place from the death wish label which is converges personal label and is it kurt and jacob the runner or is it just all of death wish either way like if kurt got his hands on this and he did production everyone would be talking about potence i think like for an early sort of thing i did enjoy it but i want to see how it progresses it was this is similar to the um bat ep at the time there's nothing wrong with it but in terms of the future i want like i don't know if i'll ever come back to this all that much but get the right producer on this get them to have full creative freedom and like within their realms like money and object freedom album number three will be big i reckon that's just this sort of thing is becoming very in at the moment and they do it like a converge style thing of that music with like the post rock haze over the top will be amazing if you earlier on the year i listened to or reviewed car and near if you go for car and near I've, because this is a world i don't know too much about car and near tenu is a band i found a bank amp or spotify somewhere i can see a lot of similarities between potence and tenu i think tenu go a little bit harder on the guitars they are more like metal kind of guitars, whereas Potent's definitely more punk. And also, classic screamer band, Page 99. Go for any of them. So that's Page 99, Tenu, or Karanir. Karanir, still don't know how to pronounce that right. Go for this. It is called... I'll try one more time. Le Cult des... <sighs> Fuck you. Le Cult des Burro. Burro. Burro just makes it sound Spanish. Uh, the... The band is called Potence. They are French screamer bands. Look for scrams if you are interested in this kind of thing, like on a grander scale. And yeah, some angry music from France. So that'll do it for this week's actual album reviews. We're going to move on next to the Open Mic album. And you can still technically class it as Eurovision because there is Armenian descent in there. It is the debut album from scars on broadway of course the solo band side project solo project weird in middle thing of darren malakian from system of a down um by 2008 when this album came out sod soad i should say had been out i'd been split oh fucking hell system of a down had split up there was no more system of a down that's what i'm trying to say i don't know why i can't say that um, in the wake of their split, all the members had their own different things going on. Shavo started Akosin with, I think it was RZA from Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, so Shan Kian famously went solo. John Domain started a band called Indicator. And as well as that, he also signed on to be the drummer with da Ford Downs Project, Scars on Broadway. In the early days of the band... Uh, they saw John and Darren experiment with various musicians in a sort of like pseudo rehearsal environment. He just got in a bunch of different musicians, tried out really various different things, and it was all creatively led by Darren himself. Before the eve, before the album had even come out, I should say, they were already playing Whiskey a Go Go in LA, Coachella, and they were supporting Metallica Live for a couple of shows they publicly released their first single they say in march 2008 and on its own it felt like a fairly safe approach there were some experiments in there that post hardcore like almost scratchy style riff but otherwise quite regimented riffs throughout the entire song it was i think in hindsight because it wasn't aware of it when excuse me initially came out it kind of strikes me looking back on it a single bait like something catchy like repetitive stuff it's a fine line between like a repetitive song like that whereas it will be stuck in your head and it invites you to come in closer or it's just become annoying in the case of they say i think it just brought people in it's like this sounds 
weird, but it's normal. But because it's normal, it sounds weird for who's singing it or who's performing on it. Let's find out what else they're kind of doing. Um, the album eventually came out that July. And conversely to the song, it or to, conversely to the single, I should say, the album just gets straight into it. Sirius has a big, chunky, offbeat opening riff, which just gets stretched out and played around with throughout the entire song. In Funny, it's the first example of using like electronic experiments that you see throughout the album. Darren has put, um, like, just playing around with various different things for what is essentially his, I guess his baby, I think. It's a weird thing to say. Um, it's sort of like a trance post-hardcore breakdown. The, oh, fucking hell. Post-chorus breakdown, I should say. Not post-hardcore. There's no post-hardcore. Um, after the chorus, you, what I'm trying to say is after the chorus, you do get this like trancey, um, just, I don't even know what it is in trance. Is it still a riff? Can electronic music have riffs? Whatever it is. There's trance stuff that happens after the chorus. Fuck you, go listen to it. Um, it just... electronic stuff just sort of helps. It just drifts into the song. And you don't really... It doesn't feel out of place. And the... the like another example is the xylophone style sound that is all over the chorus and pre-chorus of World Long Gone. It just creates a like, really idyllic surrounding. Um, it's almost like a pop break before everything else comes in. And for one thing, the riff on oh, World Long Gone is fucking good. One of the few things I ever learned how to play on guitar. And just as a whole, the guitar work on this album is astronomical. Um, exploding, reloading, enemy, stoner hate. It just... All the different spectrum that Darren could do on guitar. And I just think it's, guitar-wise, this is so, so good. Um... And often, one thing I, like, listening back to this, one thing I found was, it's not always about, in the guitar work, it's just not always about the riffs or the technicality behind them. Like, you look at uh, Babylon, Whoring Streets, Chemicals, it sounds more like Darren is just soundtracking stories or experiences, and he's just... Like a narrative is happening and this just sort of like coax it along, which I might just understood the in the primary motive of music. I'm a little I'm a few centuries behind, but that's kind of what I got from it. It's, it just carries a song along as opposed to being the forefront, which is what a lot of me, like alternative music is. Uh, lyrically, it plays a little bit plays it safe. Yes, lyrically, it plays itself a little safer than System of a Down. Um, the political charges are a little bit more PG. The only example I can find where it really went ham is when it called out Turkey, which who doesn't these days. Um, there's a few cliches, which I think are more cliche these days. I reckon back then it might have hit a little bit harder. Like in Enemy, you've got, I know it's really hard to see, that we are the enemy of the earth. Um, in World Long Gone, you've got, maybe I don't know how many people are starving in this world long gone. You know... These days, problems in like um, third world countries and pollution and climate change and this, that and the other, they are like very, very known. People are very aware of what is and is not happening with, it, to a degree, with the world. But back then it was still a case of is it, isn't it, how bad could it be sort of thing. If only we know. Uh, the one lyric I did really enjoy though was... From kill each other, live forever. If we're going to kill each other, how are we going to live forever? If we're going to live forever, how are we going to kill each other? I like that juxtaposition. I quite really did enjoy that, actually. I did see... There's a few people who were like, Ah, oh, lyrics are a little bit meh. I did really enjoy that. I thought it was really fun. Um, you still got, like, the System of a Down style lunacy. On, um... I think, it, yeah, Stone of Hate. Stone of Hate, sorry. You've got supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is just a word to me, mamma mia. At what? And I think it's chemicals. Um, when I say fuck the world, let's get ready to walk as I piss in your face while you suck on my, suck on my cock. 
like this is a man who like did sing my cock is much bigger than yours and that ended up becoming one of system of down's biggest songs so it's not a million miles away from what you expect from him, but it's just it's daft fun in it it's just daft daft lyrics from a daft man who's actually pretty brilliant but just daft um one thing that i don't want to be understated is john dalman's work on the album i think he does a great job he is such a great drummer um he's almost riffing alongside the guitar parts like you listen to a song like enemy or three three thousand five like on um, 3005, for example, you've got the um, chorus. And it's like, shooting up your words. Like, dun, 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 dun. And like, he's doing it with the guitar. So it's not just like having a basic beat that like, oh, carries on the song or whatever. He is, he is the song. He is well and truly a part of what makes up that song. And yeah, I just think he has done such a great job on that and as like a side note the riff from enemy i don't think i've written it down separately but the riff from enemy the almost like funk style riff that again john plays along with so well they're like except actually sound like music oh god it's so good it's a fucking good don't know why i went australian it's just so good oh god i Really did enjoy this album. I loved it when I first listened to it all these years ago. I still love it now. Um, overall, it is a lot more of a streamlined, hard rock kind of affair. If you want to be pedantic, it is System of Down light. There is a much more commercial, more poppier kind of feeling to it, which is like considering System were one of the few metal bands I'd say to break into mainstream pop or mainstream pop. Popular music, not pop music, if that makes sense. This is even more along the sort of lines, apart from obviously pissing your face, suck cock thing. But like I said, they did violent pornography. So, not violent pornography. Cigarro. And the core elements of Darren and like what he brings into System of Down are on show. Like Stone of Hate has, would sound very at home on Steelers' album, I think. And it's just painfully catchly. Um, the riffs, the vocal licks, the drum beats, all that sort of shit that fucking that xylophone i love that damn xylophone god it's so much fun because the songs are so short you've only got one song to really surpass the four minute mark the album never feels like it's dragging or feels like it's becoming tiresome there's always constantly something different happening from one song to the next um and i saw someone describe it as bite-sized chunks and it absolutely is and i fucking love it for it because as i said you'll just never get bored I can listen to this album, repeat, 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 and it's just, it's just a lot of fun. It's so, so good. Um, at the moment, I'm sort of like, casually looking at albums of the decade for the decade. If I was conscious enough to do it in like 2000, 2009, this probably would be in there. I really do enjoy this album i think it's fucking great with scars on broadway what happens after this so darren kind of went off and off off and on i should say with scars on broadway for a few years um he cited um lack of enthusiasm to commit to the band lack of enthusiasm to tour for a while he was out the band even though this is this was this was is his project um but he revived the band as a full solo project in 2008 and he released his second album dictator was it last year what was it last year 10 years on fuck it out uh john Darman started a new solo project with a man called james hazley called these gray men uh they released one album and the second one is currently or was at one point being kickstarted i feel like i committed to this kickstarter i have no idea what happened with it but that is what John's doing at the moment, he's also, also opened up a comic book store in Nevada. Uh, Frankie Perez, who did take the reins of um, Scars on Broadway as like, lead frontman for a while. He is now the vocal frontman of Apocalyptica, the Finnish cello metal band that went but almost viral a few years ago just because they were playing Metallica on a bunch of cellos and then everyone else started doing it. 
and somehow got bigger, which isn't fair. Apoc- Apocalyptica are great. Um, especially when you get, they used to get like random people and they had like Vili Vio, Corey Taylor, um, Laurie Ilonen, Christina Scarbia, Dave um, Lombardo. Oh God, they were the good times. They were the good times. Frankie now heads up them. And Danny Shamoon, who did a lot of percussion sort of stuff on, was it percussion or keyboards? Electronics, wasn't it? Both. I was never wrong. It's a lot of keyboard stuff, percussion stuff, piano things. Uh, Danny Shamoon, he is now like a session musician. So he just does like a little bit of everywhere here and like here and there and everywhere. And for a time, he was in the gypsy metal band Visa. And I listened to a song, Carnavalia, which I don't know if he was part of or not, but that song fucking rips. And that was Scars on Broadway. I feel like doing Life of Fans Off thing just. It's been out long enough, and I think it attained enough reach that people will already know about them, or already know what they sound like. And like I said, it is, to an extent, it is very much System of a Down light. More mesmerized, hypnotized sort of thing. Um, But it's, imagine all of that, just more poppy. And good, so very good. Not to say mesmerized, hypnotized isn't, but this is just... Very, very good music. And that will do this weird accent of Eurovision we had. Fucking Germany, France. I'm going to count Darren Malakin as my Armenian uh, entry. I don't care what anyone says. He's Arme- he is Armenian. Yeah, Armenian. Um, yeah, a weird episode. I did not realise I was um, reviewing two EPs until way too late in the week. I just thought, wow, this Axis E album is really, really short. It must be proper thrash. Oh, it's only got six songs. Ah, oh, fuck. Next week, though, jam-packed. Uh, we'll get, I'm going to be looking at the Rammstein album. Finally. Uh, Frank Carter and Rattlesnakes. Finally. And uh, Monomath, which I think is going to be my first ever Monomath album that I'm going to listen to, so I'm very excited for that. And I'm going to give away... The open mic now because it's meant to be for this week. I'm looking at Converge Jane Doe, which definitely needed more than just a week to listen to. There's a lot going on on that album. It's great, but I want to make sure I've heard Converge and out are a band I hear so much about. This is the first time I've gone in on Jane Doe like that. I feel like it deserves a little bit more time, just a little bit more attention to it. We'll say, but that's all we're coming up next week. I hope you've enjoyed this week. And, yeah, hopefully next week, no one's exploded the ball. It's a weird thing to wish for, but apparently that's what we have to wish for now. Bye!